Changing Tides. Mm -hmm. So the short film that you wrote, you directed, and I, as I understand, it's a very, very personal story for you. Yes. Can you tell me more about it? Just like, how did it start? How did the idea come to you? How much time you spent on actually even thinking about, like, should you do it or not? Yeah, so, um, so I wrote, I think it was the year before, on Father's Day, I wrote a spoken word poem um, about Father's Day, about how I um, wished that I could, just a personal, personal poem basically, about things that I missed about him and um, some of his bad sides. And I suppose that was one of the first times I'd spoken so openly about that. I was quite nervous about doing the spoken word poem at first because obviously it's not just my story. I've got mom, my mum and two sisters um, and he has a brother and you know all the rest of it. Uh, but they were very um, supportive of me doing that. And I guess that was sort of the catalyst of, it, of me thinking, all right, it's okay to talk about it. Mm -hmm. He's also been dead for 16 years. I don't think I could have said it any earlier, really. Um, because it takes a long time to understand and to heal. And I, um, so then anyway, so I wrote, again, I think it just bleh, came out of me one day, uh, the first script. Um, and then um, I sent it to a few of my friends to see what they thought and they gave some feedback. And then I just kept churning out these different drafts. It was like, it was like I was possessed. Mm -hmm. I don't know what was happening. It was sort of uncontrollable. Um, and then I saw the BBC Writers um, com uh, competition that they did, the Open Writers Programme. And I decided, and it was two weeks, and it was like a challenge. Like I didn't really think I'd get through, but I might as well just do it. So I turned this 10 page script in two weeks into a 57 page TV pilot whilst working full time. Oh my, I was so numb all over. I couldn't even stand. Oh my God, it was agony. Anyway, I did it. Um, I didn't get through to the next round, but I did it anyway. Yeah. But from then, then I was like, oh, I've seen all this scope and it made me, I guess it was quite therapeutic actually. Um, and so I stripped it back down again to a short and then thought, I wonder if, I wonder if I could get this made. Now, I wasn't going to direct originally. Um, I was going to just produce it. Because I've been a project director at LBS, um, and like I worked on their, setting up one of their um, premier, uh, their programs that they'd, uh, for the first time flagship program that they'd ever had. And I worked on the 200 million pound fundraising campaign. So like I can do project management like with my eyes closed, that's fine. That's very easy. So that's what I was going to do. And I found, weirdly, again, Twitter, X, mm -hmm. um, someone had said, put your, um, do a thread of all the up and coming British directors. So whenever anyone does that, I'm like, bookmark. Um, <laughs> and I went on it. And there was a, so I was going through all of them and looking at them. And uh, there was one guy who was from Blackpool as well. So I messaged him, sent him the log line. And uh, he said to send him the script. We met and he was really keen on directing it. Um, but he kept saying he was brilliant. He's a brilliant guy, really good director. And he was like, but if you want to direct this, you should. I would love to, but if you want to. Then I went home at Christmas and I, could, I couldn't stop seeing the shots. And I was like, I'm so sorry, I, I'm going to have to do this. And he was like, no, honestly, it's totally fine. Um, but then I needed a producer, I thought. So then I went out again on X, asked people if there was any producers, um, sent the script to a few people, but they weren't, they didn't have, they, had, they couldn't do it that year and I wanted to do it last year. So then ended up producing it as well, myself. It's so funny, the two actors who were in it, they were like, it's like being on Netflix. But like, it, it was like being on the inside, you know, all the, the sheets, the daily, the, all the things. Um, and, um, but I wanted to film it in Blackpool. And so I was looking at options for getting kits in Blackpool because I don't, I've not lived there for more years than I lived there. I don't want to give my age away. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so I don't know who's, um, I didn't know who was there. So I started to look for uh, production companies in Blackpool, found this one um, called Out of the Ark and he'd won a few awards as well in film festivals. And I was like, and it's got a drone and all this. And I thought, oh, brilliant. So then we went on, uh, we decided we'd work together. He introduced me to Dave who plays Aiden. I kind of already knew the girl who plays B, um, 
But I actually emailed the head of my old drama school asking her if she had any recommendations for someone. And she recommended her and I sort of kind of knew her and I was like, oh, I'm brilliant and that's great, well, I'll ask her. Um, so that's how that came, and, yeah, and then we got into shooting and that's sort of how that came about. But I did, along the way, want to make sure that my family felt okay with it. So they read the scripts before we went into production. Um, they were with me along the whole way. Um, I did a Kickstarter campaign as well too, actually. Um, and I talked to them about what I was going to do beforehand because I don't want to, it is their story. Of course. Um, so I did a whole, yeah, a whole campaign before I launched the Kickstarter as well, telling my story every day. Um, and through that, I found a charity called NACOA, the National Association of Children of Alcoholics. Um, and pff, that's totally changed my life. Yeah. Like, I cannot believe I didn't know about that when I was going through everything with Dad. Um, and so I've become a massive advocate of them. And, um, and then they've been really supportive of me and that whole community as well. And then, yeah, then we filmed it and yeah, the rest of how, how was How was it directing for the first time? Like some oh gosh, I was so nervous. But I was so nervous, but also because I know, having worked in business and been an actor, mm -hmm. is like, you need to look the most in control. Even if you're nervous, don't let anyone else know that. Just don't show that because um, then they, they could lose trust in you. So, so I use actually a lot of different elements of what I've used in business before, what I've seen on set before, and, and again, fully immerse myself in director's podcasts, mm -hmm. directing actors, all of these different things. Um, and so uh, I stole the Philip Baroncini thing, uh, which we do in business anyway, which is having a um, sit down meeting every day before you start. Uh, so everyone's together. We all have our breakfast together. We all talk. Everyone knows what's happening, what the day's plan is. Mm -hmm. um, and then it just makes everyone really calm. So I think on set, that's the most important thing. But I also know from business, beyond when you come to launch, go live, as you can call it in project management, um, do the prep beforehand. And so I had two rehearsal, or one rehearsal with each of the um, actors before on Zoom, three hours each. Um, but prior to that, I'd gone through the script, which was nuts, right? I mean, gosh, <laughs> I may have OCD. But um, so the script that I wrote that I'd lived, I went through it and I wrote 10,000 words of notes on it, which is mm -hmm. insane, isn't it? From, a, again, Periscope up. So what could this line be? If it's played this way, what does that mean? If it's played that way, what does this mean? If it's, how does then that knock onto that to have the effect that I need from this last point? Um, so I'd done all of that. So then by the time I get into the rehearsal with them, then I was, I could give them, talk to them about what options they want, give them different options, tell them where we're going to get to. So actually when they got on set, it was like, they were both so grounded in who they were. We actually smashed the, <laughs> the schedule like every day. And it was like, it took minimal direction because we'd done so much of the pre-work already. How how different was their performance in the end? They're like the, 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 the characters that they created from what you've seen in your head when you were writing it? Uh, no, I think it was spot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think if anything, actually B is a bit softer. Um, but because um, B is sort of me, and I would have been a bit more like like that. Uh, but um, she was a bit softer. But the interesting point was was you know some of the nuances that like we'd worked on with them at the beginning that added a few more layers that they may have not seen um, had we not gone through the script like we had line by line. So like at first, um, you know, B was because she's the only actual person on the cast and crew um, that hasn't had an experience of alcoholism mm -hmm. as a family member. Um, whereas Dave, who plays Aiden, his ex-wife died of alcoholism as well. So he, he could almost come straight in because he knows that. Um, and so there was some moments like, but why, why would she forgive him then? It's like, she just do. <laughs> Obviously, you know, that's, but we, so we had to, you know, so we worked behind unpacking some of that and it is, and that was quite cathartic as well. And it's like, why, you know, that's the, that's the struggle. And that's what I want this story to show is as a person that cares for someone with an addiction, it's that roller coaster of emotions that you go on. It's not a commentary on how people become addicted. It's a commentary on the lives 
of an addict. Do you see what I mean? Mm. Um, addict and the people who surround it. Yeah, exactly. And and the addict themselves, one that once they've got to end of life stage where that realization comes on them too. Um, yeah, as opposed to it being, you know, any any sort of um, display of oh, alcoholism. This leads to alcoholism. That's not what this is about. Yeah, it's it's not a commercial or like or you know, it's it's just a story of real people. Just real people. Yeah, yeah. character very character driven, and and I think that's what um, those two are such good actors as well. And, and I think really getting under those legs, that's why there's some, there's some beautifully nuanced performances from the two of them. And then edit, so we edited and we had, uh, so I don't, you may have noticed from this chat, I don't ever do things by half. And, um, and I decided to do three screenings. So we're gonna have three screenings, partly because I'd done this Kickstarter and not only had people given me money, um, they told me their stories. I had so many people opening up that they'd never told anyone before that their parent was an alcoholic. Um, and um, and all the Nakoa people and the, all of this. So I decided to do three screenings. Uh, one was September and two were in October. So we had the premiere screening in Blackpool on the 19th of October and two weeks later Manchester, two weeks later London in um, Crouch End. And then, um, so we had to be ready for that, <laughs> the 19th of September. So we finished in June, had to be ready for the 19th of September. It was ready two weeks before. No, it was ready three weeks before, but it wasn't. Mm. <laughs> it came back and we had a bit of crisis. So actually at those three screenings, they were more the, um, what do you call it when like the big films test screen? Oh, basically test, test screen. Test screen, yeah. there you go. So they were more like a test screen, if you will. Um, so after doing those three screenings, then it went back into edit with a, another editor um, who worked on the sound and the color grading. And then we got it final lock ready on the 5th of February. So how long will be your, your festival run? Uh, it's normally 12 to 18 months, uh, depending on when the last one is. Uh, the last festival that's happened. So I only started uh, putting them in in February. I only started finding out about them in, uh, where are we now, in May. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was about May or June. So I've so far been a finalist at um, Liverpool Indie Festival. I've been in Lift Off Manchester and Wolverhampton, just. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, and I'm waiting to hear, I think there's about, what, I don't know, there's about 27 that I'm waiting to hear from. And tell us more about your award. Yay! <laughs> so uh, I was at the wonderful Wolverhampton Film Festival um, just the other weekend. Um, there's such good people as well. Like, I, I don't think I've been to a friendlier festival. Mm. Um, and so we got selected, which was huge, just to even be selected. It's a three day event. Um, and I messaged them because it's it was on the same weekend that I was doing a 21 mile hike for Nakoa. Um, so they very kindly moved my screening to the Sunday. Yeah. So I did the 21 mile hike um, in the Peak District and then the next morning we drove, we, I don't drive, Adam, drove to Wolverhampton um, and we watched the, the film there with our achy legs. And then we went to the award ceremony that evening because it was nominated for Best New Filmmaker at the seven other films who were nominated and it won. Nice. Ah! Congratulations. I know.